welcome to episode 4 of Joey Berry Goes to Adepticon. Um, so yesterday's video was a long one, it was a, like nearly 40 minutes worth of uh, a couple of interviews, me wandering around in the day, blue table painting, um, and I had a Malifaux game with Miranda that will be available on her channel. So today we are talking about this Sunday, which is the last Adepticon day, um, but I stay till Monday. So um, on Sunday, uh, I left you in the evening after play, playing the Malifaux game and I was very tired. So I went to bed pretty much straight after that. Miranda wasn't there straight away in the evening. So we woke up um, and again, I think we slept in kind of late. So we decide that we're pretty hungry by this point. So we want to go to um, get some breakfast. So we go in the car um, with her and her friends and we go to the Egg Harbour Cafe and I have something called a skillet where you can probably see a picture this side, not this side, this side. Um, yeah, I have a skillet, like a meat one and then uh, there's like apple cinnamon pancakes. Miranda has this kind of like cinnamon swirl but like like a French toast thing, so egg batter and then cinnamon on top of the cinnamon swirl. It's like some kind of cinnamon inception swirl. Mental. Um, but it looks amazing and it smells amazing. So we kind of eat, we have, we rejuvenate ourselves and we get ready because today we're going to do some uh, war machine. So uh, the kind of plan was is that I teach her uh, Malifaux, which is not my like primary game system. If I had to choose one, I'd say it's probably Warhammer Fantasy. But um, I play a crew that I've never played before, and uh, she plays Perdita and Lady J. So I'm a little bit sketchy on a lot of the things that go on in that game. But War Machine, I seem to pick up fairly well. So uh, I'll show you a little bit about what we got up to that day. Okay, so it's Sunday. I've just looked at and well recorded some of the crystal brush, crystal brush stuff. There we go. And now we snuck into the private press room where last night, very very late at night, I ha I'd had a game of Malifaux with Miranda, and she's going to now teach me some war machines. So we're going to see how this goes. I'll do some brief coverage because my camera is dying. Miranda, I'm assuming that you're doing Kador. Your, your usual, yes? Uh, no, you, you, I'll just pick whatever one you know. So do I get first choice? Yes, ma'am. Wow, so these are my options. What is this here? That Hello? is Signar, led by Striker. So he would be your leader, and then he has two light jacks and one heavy jack. So three, four, four models of all. Okay, and what's behind? That would be Kador's starter box, led by Sorsha, with a destroyer and a juggernaut. Okay, and then what's this? This would be Kriya. Of the Menas, um, and he has three jacks, a heavy, and is it a repentry or a redeemer? Revenge? Yeah. I think I, I think I'm gonna go with blue. Blue? With blue. All right. That's my my choice. Leader. The important thing. Unlike Malifaux, where you can kill the models and still win or draw, if he dies, game automatically ends and the opponent dies. Right. So he needs to say he's like in chess, your king and queen back put in one. Okay. Because that's the most powerful piece in the board. Right. Um, so he has a spell casting of six, which will be represented by tokens that you're going to have. He can spend those to do different abilities on here. In any given turn, they're always replenished. Okay, cool. So I don't need to be afraid of using them in a turn, they will come back. Yeah, exactly. Right. There are certain benefits to keeping it. Whatever you have left over at the end of your individual activation go in addition to your armor. And so there would be maybe a reason to not spend them. Well, that's just for a deeper strategy. Then he controls three what are called warjacks. You have a two light warjacks and a heavy. Uh, the lighter ones are usually faster, lower armor, so it's very inversely proportional. This is their health boxes. Whenever you take damage, it's all represented in the number of dice rolls uh, and degrees of success. So, say something has a power strength here, you'll see he's got two different weapons, a gun and a, and a sword, so my mouth up. Here's the power and strength of it, it's power 13. That number against, say, his armor, 16. So there's a difference of three, and it would be this power plus two d whatever you're rolling at. And you can spend a point of focus, if you have it on you, to add an additional dice to it. Cool. So in the first couple of turns, we're basically just 
moving forward and she's kind of explaining the dynamics of the cards, the wound systems, how you kind of mark them off um, and you roll a different dice when it comes to it to, to figure out what column it's going to go in. Um, and if you hit two of the same letters in, in, the, in the boxes then like a, something falls off, like an arm stops working. Or five, it immediately just goes to the next one to the right afterwards. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That actually, you see these little boxes with the different letters in them? Yeah. Um, if you take out all the boxes of the same letter, that system goes out. In this case, it was his left arm. So I had this idea, n not that it's probably my idea, but I was thinking if I were to do um, War Machine, I would probably magnetise stuff like the War Jacks so you could literally pull off their arm and it would fall on the floor. Um, if anyone's done that with their with their like war machine hordes thing, uh, send me pictures on Facebook, so I'd like to see how you've done it. But you know, I thought, oh, that'd be pretty cool. And that was like an interesting factor for me, just like arms are falling off and legs stop working, which obviously stopped that attack happening because there's two, there's one for left and right. Uh, or there was in, in her case, in my case, one's got like a drill, one's got a fist or um, something like that. So it was really, that was really cool in my mind. So yeah, the first couple of turns are just kind of like moving and then explanations and stuff. And it's, you know, I'm kind of getting to grips with it. I've played skirmish games before, so it's not completely out of the ordinary. So um, we then play a couple of moves and I do some attacks and she shows me about that. As I said, markers, uh, letters indicate which kind of limb is being attacked as well. So you roll a separate dice to see which column that the attacks are allocated to, which was cool. So, um, yeah, we play our turns. So on uh, the first turn, you moved your guys forward. Yep. Um, and so we allocate focus to the models to make these two jacks do things, but that's fine, she doesn't need it to move. Uh, I did the same with, with mine, so this is my current setup. I can use this guy's range for magic, so I'm going to keep this one away and kind of back in the next movement turn, so I can, you know, try and blast stuff without getting this one, who I need to protect and keep safe. So it's your go now. So allocation is done. Um, he's going to activate. He's going to move up. He's going to see if he can shoot your blurred jack. Okay, does it... So, this one? Yes, ma'am. Right. So he could move up, but instead of moving up, I'm going to not move, and because I'm basically sacrificing that movement, I can get an aiming bonus. His, rat, his ability to do range attack is kind of bad, it's only a four. So if I stand still, it goes up to a by two, so it's up to a six. Um, I have a 14 inch range, so the important thing will be to see if I have range to you. So that's where we measure out. You're within my 14 inches, so you're only supposed to measure out two. Um, so now I'm at six and you're in defense. 16. 16 now because I was 13 and then I did the blur spell, so I'm a 16. Okay. So that means that on two dice I would have to get a 10 to hit you. But I have focus allocated so I can spend a point and to choose a three dice. dice. Which should be good, should be fine. On average, but nice. never. <laughs> so there you go. That shot is a miss. Miss! Um, in that case, though, because this specific shot is an AoE, an area of attack. Do you damage yourself, or does it just stop doing um, it? Um, it, it deviates. Oh, no. Yes. So, in a deviation roll, you would take whatever the size AoE it is, which in this case it says AoE 3, right, which is a 3 inch template. You center it over the intended target, and since it's deviating, you have to see dice to see where it goes. Okay. There's, not, there's not a scatter die like you would have. Um, instead, one always points directly in the direction of the shot. We'll use dice. We'll first determine the direction, which number it's going to go in. So it's going to go in direction four, which is straight back, and then we're going to roll to see how many inches. So there's three inches back, which is enough to completely clear the jack, I believe. 
So, zero damage. You're fine. And that's his activation. He's going to move up over here and cast Windrush on herself for another two defense. So you're staying behind the wall here. Yeah, although I don't get a bonus to that right now, so I'm not that far enough. Now, Windrush has a general ability. Does that, is that still in play, or because it's a new turn, is it gone? Uh, but Windrush, I just cast it. Again. Another benefit to, in addition to it giving the two defense, is it allows me to move it. So she can become very fast as a result of that. So she is going to move up next to the wall. And she has one focus left in her. So Her defense from shooting is actually exceptionally high right now. So I really want to get into close combat. Um, her defense in close combat is still pretty good too. You want to knock her down is your best bet. Okay. So she's going to spend two to cast Wind Rush, which is a plus two defense and a and then as her action, she's going to charge Striker. You're not going to feed? She'll feed up to the rim. He's not in line of sight. Measuring my control radius. Yeah, I think she will feed. So her feet is insane. It says models currently in Sorcerer's control area and line of sight are automatically stationary, which for all intents and purposes means you're petrified. And it'll be similar to putting your defense down to five. But stationary actually means if you're me melee swinging, you automatically hit, which is actually not good. So she's going to feed. You are not in her line of sight, but he is, he is, and he is. Right. So these three will become stationary. So he's not mine to sight because it's the 180 sight for Jack is in the way with the bigger base. Exactly, Jack blocks. I can't see him. And then she's going to charge straight. She has six inch movement plus three, so nine. She has a two inch reach as well. So I don't actually have to roll because for uh, melee attacks against stationary, you're knocked down automatically hit. And you don't want to have to roll if you don't have to because if you roll double ones, you automatically miss. So she's there, she has three focus, and she's going to just swing on you. Um, automatically hit, what's your armor right now? Uh, 15. But with your feet. With your feet up, it's plus five. So 20. Yep. Okay, so I'm a 20. And which how hard do you hit? I hit a power 13, so that's dice minus 7. Right. Oh. You're here, you're tanking this. Okay. So right now, he has as much armor as he does <laughs> <laughs> right now. Yes. Okay. But I charge, so that's why I'm having three dice. Yep. Uh, was it dice minus 7? So it's one point of damage. Cool. So I just smashed in your uh, Sorcia, um, because you ran around the corner here to, uh, what, assassinate me. To show you what that looks like. Um, but I just, uh, luckily, like, it was lucky rolls. Not really, you were pretty tough. I did, like, a lot of sixes. You did. Yeah, a lot of sixes. And I still had four four tokens left, so I did kind of well on that one. Um, I like it. I've enjoyed it. It wasn't as uh, complicated with the cards and the markers and stuff as I thought it would be. Um, how did you think I did on my first War Machine game? No, you did well. You moved appropriately. And you used your arc node, which is very good. Uh, you used your range shooting. You understood how the defense works. So. I enjoyed that quite a lot. I think uh, I've looked at a few of the books and stuff, and I like some of the Everblight, yeah. Legion of Everblight. So that might be something I look into, but I'm definitely, I've got a lot of faith in this guy, so. He's, he's a really good caster. He's a very stable caster. Um, Hordes with Legion was a little differently. Like, the focus getting it at the beginning, it's a little bit different a uh, mechanic than you do Hordes, but it's very different. Well, thank you for an excellent game.
I'm definitely interested in War Machine Lords and you have to be my uh, international guide if you want to get stuff done. So thank you Miranda, I loved it. And the end result is that I win, which is awesome. Um, she's playing kind of a an assassin-y character, I'm playing a, a shooty one, and I think the basic premise as it was, was explained to me by her, um, her and her buddies is that I had to kind of use a knockdown spell to reduce the armor and then shoot her from a distance and then pretty much get her low enough so when I did come to uh, do my attacks on her character after she's kind of chased me across the board was just pretty much hit her in the face and then she's dead. War Machine, um, as it was kind of explained and what I took from it, once the your like little general main, mini main miniature dies, that's it, game over. There's no like... Um, other things that can be redeemed, you have to protect it entirely. It is your king and queen of uh, of models. So, yeah, I, I pretty much killed her off. I had quite a few wounds on uh, on my guy remaining. So that was all pretty awesome. So we were having a conversation afterwards about if I were to choose a War Machine, what would I do? And after doing some of the Indiegogo stuff and and getting the books in and having a look through them, I think I'm kind of into the Legions of Everblight stuff because it's it's kind of uh, beasty enough, as opposed to like a like a Jack, where it's all you know massive models, where they're like big armor pads, and it's less robotic and it's more kind of beast. So uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna go for that. So you may be seeing a new series of War Machine, but I'd primarily focus on um, painting and stuff for the meantime, as uh, until I get my game club up and running properly, I won't really have a space to do any games. So I might be focusing on that in the next couple of episodes ahead. So keep an eye out. I've had quite a few people asking about a War Machine series if I was going to get into it. But obviously, uh, if you are interested in War Machine, go over to War Gamer Girl, who does quite in-depth and uh, really well put together battle reports. Um, and yeah, she should be doing a Malifaux one from me and her, as I say, forgive my mm, nurse, where I'm like knackered and slightly drunk. Um, but yeah, that was, it was all really good fun. And we had a little bit of an interview afterwards. That as well will be on her channel, but we talk about both the Malifaux and the War Machine game. So here that is. Needless to say, I'm a violent player. No, not at all. There's no violence towards it, but you're very much a... You know, when, with the current situation, it's different to, I think we just did a game of War Machine, yeah. which is, um, you know, we had all dice and um, cards and stacks and pointers and markers, and it's a very different game system to what I want. It is. But Malifaux with the flicks instead, like, how did you find the, the positive and the negative in the street? Uh, that is really cool. Um, I guess uh, a few people even mentioned in the Malifaux room that if you know how to count cards, it ends up being a very interesting game. Um, I don't know how to count cards, but it is cool because you know, say the Black Joker, you pulled it out, and you're like, well, I can kind of hedge my bets based on the fact that even though it's sort of randomized with cards, um, I can't roll more than four ones, for example, like you can in Daddy so you can theoretically roll on Yeah. Um, and so the dice, or the cards are really, really an interesting aspect, I like that. So also in the day, uh, I think the day before, if not that day itself, I get interviewed by um, Tabletop Minions, uh, the lovely Adam. So there's an interview on his channel with me, and here's an interview on this channel with him. Hello, I'm Joey. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you as well. Adam, so you're uh, Tabletop Minions. Yes. That's your new channel. And tell me how you began, because I know you were once at least before. Yeah, I was. Um, Back in about 2010, they, uh, the Beast of War guys, were starting their own website because they had been doing just straight YouTube um, channel, and then YouTube changed the way that their channels worked, and it made Warren and Lloyd kind of bummed, so they're like, well, we'll go forward and make our full-blown website. And I'm a web designer, that's my day job. Yeah. So I was interested in that kind of stuff, and they were talking about the beta and how it was working. And then they mentioned also in one of the titles Gen Con. Yep. And I've been going to Gen Con since 93. Wow. So uh, I said, well, okay, I want to watch this video and okay. find out because maybe they're going to be there and I'll be able to, you know, meet them. That'd be kind of cool. Well, at the very end of it, it basically said, if anyone's going to Gen Con, you know, put a comment, you know, below. So I said, yeah, I'm going to Gen Con. I've been going since 93, whatever. 
and then I went to bed. It was like midnight. And they're like, I don't know, six hours ahead over there. I get up the next morning, I've got an email. They're saying, hey, um, do you have an HD camera and a microphone, and do you want to interview people and talk? And I said, strangely, yes, actually. That, and so I just made a quick recording and sent it to them so they could realize that I wasn't like a creep or a weirdo or whatever. Yes, of course. Which is helpful. And then um, from there, basically, I did... Gen Con 2010, 2011, 2012, and then I did adept, the last two Adepticons. So you like, took the reins of being Beast of War within Gen like U.S. correspondent was the term US that I, yes, yes, nice. yeah, that worked out nice. That's so, role. yeah, exactly, at this point, yes. You're the U.S. correspondent to the Joey Berry channel. Exactly. Dual role, I assume. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so um, they're really cool guys. I was doing some uh, recording as well, like, in my basement, the Nerd Bunker. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and those were a lot of fun. But uh, April, roughly, 2012, portions of Nerd Bunker flooded. Uh, so I had to move a bunch of stuff around, and so my studio wasn't working so well for a while. So it kind of like started to wane. Did you have any massive losses? No, no it was what happened was is that a lot of stuff had to be moved. And it wasn't a big flood, it was small, but a lot of stuff had to be moved into where the studio was. The studio part was actually quite dry, but now it was full of all kinds of other things. Yep. So it slowed things down, and um, that was kind of a, of a problem. And then I started to think to myself, I really want to do my own channel. I want to do my own, you know, my job is sort of creative, but I still have a boss who says, no, I think that should be blue, or yep, whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm thinking to myself, I want to have a creative endeavor that's completely what I want to do, and I'm in control of it. So, I completely understand that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm pretty much affiliated with the consortium and I do. I, I'm corresponding exactly as you said. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the freedom to be able to be like, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I no. Like it. I, 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 yeah, that's definitely kind of where I'm going. That and also the editing. It's an area that I, I'm not trained in necessarily, so I'm teaching myself and I'm really enjoying that. Well, that's pretty bloody fancy. I've seen some stuff that you've been doing recently. Well, I went, to school, I went to school for photography, so I've got that background, which is really helpful. Um, but then, yeah, it's, it's a lot of learning things. It, it's so amazing in this day and age to go on the internet and find an answer to nearly any question that you ever have in your head, you know? Um, and so anytime I'm thinking, like, how can I make my camera make it look a little bit more like cinema? And I start to learn about crushing the blacks, you know, in post to make the, the you know, stuff look a little bit more cinema and using a prime lens and shooting really shallow depth of field and all this other junk that most people don't necessarily think about, but I'm kind of trying to work some of that into what I'm doing as well. I'm also mainly just talking about, like I did one recently about diversification after some of the shenanigans that James, Games Workshop um, pulled. <laughs> I was just like, you know, don't put all your eggs into that basket, you yeah. know? Think about skirmish games, Malifaux, Mercs, all these different cool little games that you can get into for cheap, you know, and if things really go weird in Games Workshop and you get really angry with it, you're not completely out of things to do. Yes. I know you play Fantasy and 40K and also Malifaux. Oh, and Relics. Okay, so all right. I've got four games under my belt, but you raised an interesting point in the video that you did. You actually referenced me as well. You mm -hmm. were talking about having a like a personal attachment to a miniature. And oh, yeah, in yeah. Some shape or form. Now, I've been playing Malifaux for, for a little while. I'm mostly involved in some of the painting work as opposed to the playing. It's not yeah. many people do in my area. So, I was thinking about every character within Malifaux is pretty much named and has a backstory. Sure. So, They're all care. you know, I was floating around the idea of like, how could you work it? So, you know, there's a singular crew that has stats for every, they're, they're own individual stats, but they, yeah. their names are blank and they are just blank models that you can pretty much do whatever you want with. So, yeah. Say they're a more expensive crew, you can do whatever you want to them. I think that stuff like that could such a solid storyline. Yeah. It's like a mercenary team. Mm -hmm. You kind of put together and put your own mark on it. But you know, it's still very personal game in a sense. I mean, Rasputina, Tina, as you mentioned, right. is my my lady. I love her. Sure. You know, and I put my own little twist on it, but she is still Rasputina, whether she's mine or someone else's. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's an individual character. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I like to theme a lot of my stuff, and uh, theming is what gets me the love and the personal attachment what is it that matters to you about I am frankly not a 
uh, tournament player. I'm not very competitive. For me, it's the enjoyment of the game, but it's also a lot of the craft. I love to paint, and I love to build, and I love to convert and do all that stuff. Um, that, that whole thing about personalization was important because I love to take some figures and start to modify them a lot. Yeah. Um, the, the Games Workshop, uh, Nurgle Chaos Lord, you know, where he's got the big axe and the big, the big stomach and all that. I made a... He is, but if you look, and I mentioned that in the video, if you look in every issue of uh, White Dwarf since they rebooted, that figure's in every single one. Yeah. Like someone's converted it to do this and there's like a showcase of it. It's in every single issue so far because it's really such an amazing fig. So I made a, a 40k version, gave him, you know, a chaos backpack, put a pistol on his hip, you know, took a bayonet and stuck it like right into him like it's not really affecting him, that kind of a thing. And yeah. it's just really fun to do that kind of stuff. And then you give him a name and you give him a, you don't even have to sit there and say, well, they did this and this happened or whatever. You're just kind of, when you start playing with the people you play with and they're on the tabletop, you know, you're like, oh, it's old Drippy. That's his name. And um, so. So is that your, your favorite named character? Do you have a couple? Or is I've that got old one? Drippy and then I've also got a Terminator Chaos Lord uh, with dual lightning claws whose name is uh, Uncle Tickles. And, um, and he was a lot of fun to paint. Uh, that was the, some of the first airbrushing that I started to do on lightning claws. Right. So I'm painting them like bright light blue and then just airbrushing just a little bit of white on the edges to get that kind of gradient. And it worked out pretty well. The trick is poster putty. Nice. You take some poster putty and you basically mask off the rest of the guy and he's just got the claws sticking out and then you don't spray white oh, on no, stuff you don't a, want. Yeah, that's what you're do. Yeah. So I've got um, a couple of names models that I've got for my original like fantasy wood elf army. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing some a little bit of dabbling with girl painting and trying yeah, yeah. to get a bit of advice from her. So she's sending me a tree man and I've already got more than tree man. Right, right. Go that. Yeah. My, my favorite. Yeah. And so his bigger brother, we've got John Trevolta. <laughs> and this was like, it made my absolute night. So I was thinking about it. And I love puns, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. all about it. And uh, yeah, so I think naming naming characters that you really love, just it just makes me laugh every time. And it, someone's always like, oh. Oh, yeah. You know? No, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I've, I've got one guy that he doesn't even have a name right now, but he's playing a game. I was playing a game in. Uh, the unit got tank shocked by a Chimera, uh, Imperial Guard, and you, I did Death and Glory because he had a, a melting gun and blew up that tank, but he died in the resulting explosion. So he wasn't painted yet, so now he's got a big spike between the parts of his backpack and there's a skull on it and stuff. So he's special. I don't have a name for him yet, but I, anytime I bring him out on the table, I remember it. And that kind of stuff in my mind is really what makes the game, for me at least, going and playing for 12 hours and trying to get top table and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not necessarily for me. I yeah. like the other stuff. So with your channel, what's the direction in which you're going? How is it separate from what you've been doing before? Well, I'm really not doing much in the way of reviews. Okay. Um, I'm really not doing much in the way of unboxings or anything along those lines. I'm talking about some attitudes, like you should diversify, it's a good idea. Personalize, find new ways to enjoy the game. Yep. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit in the way of tutorials. Um, I'm waiting to get a second camera so I can do a little bit of a two camera thing where you can see me, but then also see what yeah, I'm yeah, painting, yeah. that kind of deal. Um, and then I do, I am planning on starting to do, I've been talking to a couple different uh, designers. Um, I wanna start doing some short pieces about the fluff from the game. So, if you don't know what Malifaux is, here's a three minute video that explains what's going on so you don't have to go and do the research. Yeah, like the basic maybe. premises. Exactly, okay. yeah, you know, I'm gonna be doing one of those for, um, I know Dust Warfare is on the, on the chopping block, and the other one is the new game, um, which isn't even out yet, um, uh, Wild West Exodus. Yep. I've been talking to those guys. Um, Craig Gallant from the D6 Generation podcast did a lot of the writing for that. Most of the writing, I believe, as far as the fluff is concerned. So I'm hoping to get something like that. I think that's those are going to be things that, again, things that I enjoy, but will be short and easy, and people will enjoy watching them, and they'll be able to learn more about these different games and. It sounds like kind of discussion based as opposed to like a lot of a lot of the channels at the moment. I, that's similar to what I do as well, like a talking, a talking. Yeah, topic. no, exactly. I'm uh, so far most of my videos have been a bit talky, uh, but I do want to do some more tutorials, more about you know if you don't know anything about airbrushing, this is kind of how you can get started. Or if you want to try to paint a lot of guys quickly, yeah. you know, here's some easy ways you can do it. I had a friend just recently who wants to do a whole bunch of 
winter-themed guard, but he's not a painter and he's real nervous about it. He's got this tournament coming up that he has to have painted stuff. So I'm just like, prime them all white, use some tan wash on their pants, paint their brute their boots like gray, yeah. flesh wash on the face and hands, and paint the guns, and you're done. And you can do things like that. They don't necessarily look great, but you know, you've got a million well, guard in most of those. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, was there anything that you wanted to mention specifically for the new stuff you got going ahead? Um. Now, I've just been shooting some videos here, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting home and doing some editing. I did a little bit of editing last night. Did you? Yeah, I did just a short video. I'm not afraid to. Yeah. Well, I just got a new laptop, so I'm like, I'm gonna give it a try. So I did a little bit of shooting actually on the ride here. We were coming from the north, coming south. There was a point where. It was bright sunny like it is out today, but it was also raining and snowing at the same time. Oh so God. I'm not sure what that was all about, frankly. Uh, but yeah, so I did a little bit of a reportage like from the hotel and on the drive itself. It was a very short video, but it's fun to kind of do that stuff. I'm going to be at Gen Con, yep. so that's a four-day thing. Oh, excellent. I'm going to be at Gen Con, and so I'm definitely planning on doing editing while I'm there. Yep. And uh, um, although... Sometimes having internet in the hotels there is rough. So yeah, I, that was always kind of a bit of an issue when I was working with Pieces of Wars. They would want me to send stuff back right away. And a lot of times it worked great, and other times the hotels just did not yeah, play ball. Well, so yeah. I thought, you know, when I was at Promo for the ETC, mm -hmm. um, there was nothing. Yeah, yeah. There, there was, uh, and my primary focus there was reporting on the tournament. So I can't do that here. There's so many games. Just oh yeah, it's crazy. Events that it's just, you know. Joking. What do you think about Adepticon? This is just such an experience on, on so many levels. It's my first time to America. It's sure. my, you know, first time in this scale, mm -hmm. you know, with vendors and games and every game system yeah. that I play. I mean, I've even seen some relics in the Crystal Rush, mm -hmm. and I did not expect that at all. So it's really amazing to see how many people are, are loving the games that I play and bringing them to, to a massive event. That's like what I love about Adepticon, is that when I go to um, Gen Con, you've got role players, you've got cosplay, Players, you've got LARPers, you've got Magic Card players, and everybody's there, and they all love games and anime and that kind of stuff. When you come to Adepticon, everybody loves miniatures. Yeah. That's the thing, you know what I mean? So it's great to be able to know that any guy you just reach over and poke, they're going to tell you about whatever miniatures they're working on, or, and you're not going to hear about other stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that other stuff, but it's just nice to have that niche, in my opinion, yeah, and be you're in that area. Like -minded. Yes, you've absolutely. Got the same thing to talk about. So I've never really felt alone in this kind of place because I've been like, you're a wargamer. Exactly. Over with you. you exactly. Know? Yes. So yes. it's been really welcoming. I've had the best time. Yeah. I'm obviously a little jet lagged. Yeah, I can understand that. But uh, I'm doing really good so far with this whole experience, and I, I'm kind of not looking forward to going back. Well. The food's better here. Except the wind. Something the wind. Like. Well, they call it the Windy City for a reason. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been lovely to chat with you. Uh, and absolutely. And I'll be absolutely. around online, as will you. So yes. we'll converse and perhaps Skype. Oh yeah, yeah, and Twitter. Um, I don't turn on the um, comments in my YouTube videos. Why is that? Well, YouTube videos in general, I've found. And maybe it's just because I'm looking at videos that aren't necessarily wargame related. Yeah. A lot of times, those those comments can be terrible and just mean spirited and things because it I'd might be say a that's video. Part of the fun. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. I have a lot of and have had it so much grief. But there's always that people and that moment where someone says, "You know what? No, I'm watching this video because I want to," mm -hmm. and they will white knight you so hard you'll yeah. be like, "This is why my comments are uh, like, yeah. allowed." And you know, I, I love the discussions that I had because it really allows you to get a bigger perspective of what's going on. But for me, that's important because I'm so new. Yeah. I mean, I've been here a year and a half, but everything to me is still like, you know, I'm learning. Yeah. And I'm getting more my thinking today. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about switching over. And actually turning on kind of comments. Right now I use Twitter mainly and uh, I've got a Facebook page that's... I'd say take the link. Yeah, I'd I'm, say thinking I'm thinking about with, it. I'm thinking about it. With what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, people are more gracious than you would imagine. But well, I and that's the thing. Nasty. is Because it's in a niche, because it's mainly just war gamers that are watching it, I think that you are going to probably, in the long run, get nicer people. Yeah. Or at least people that understand what you're talking about. If it's just some video and it's somebody who falls down the stairs or something like that and gets zillions of hits on YouTube, you are going to get a full cross-section of very possibly weirdos. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I'd say take the leap at some point. 
it is worth it. I yeah. would say those lovely comments do make my day. Communication with fans or whatever, viewers at the very least, uh, I think is a lot of fun. And I, I have been enjoying that. I enjoy that here as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've been really surprised by how I've been received. Yeah, well, that's because, good. That's really good. You know, obviously the accent is a bit of a, like... Sure. Well, I think that's maybe the liquor a little bit too. Yeah, I'm not. This is this is the only one. Is it? Well, I mean, other conventions I go to, there's never bars like right there. Maybe that's an American thing. There's, I'll tell you right now, no liquor at Gen Con. I mean, you could bring your own if you sneak it, but oh, wow. uh, plan, plan ahead. I will. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna make sure the Irish team are there. They've that's always. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good. Idea. See, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks for chatting with me. Let's go hit up the bar at some point. All right. And uh, make use of the adeptical spirits. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, cool. So everyone's kind of winding down. We've had. I've done a couple of interviews. I also do one with Bill. Uh, like you can see a little bit of a clip of what I did with him. The links to those interviews are on the previous cha previous video on the playlist, and I'll put them in this one as well, so you can see what I got up to talking to those guys. Um, but over the over the three days that I've been in Depticon, that I have had quite a few interviews done of me, so they they are scattered around the net if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I'll try find as many as I can and put them in the descriptions if you're interested in watching them. So um, I have one with Bill, with Terena Hollick, who I can't speak of highly enough, him and his wife Sue. Um, so when I first met them, we started talking about, like, you know, how am I finding America? And, and they told me that they've been to England quite a few times. And we discussed this last night a little bit as well, where, um, where we're all at the meal together and um, they, they tell me their love of cider. So if you're American, cider is, uh, you know, not anything like the cider you have. And it's hard to explain, but it's much nicer. What you've kind of got is an alcoholic appetizer and it's just not the same. So um, we were all talking about our, our mutual love of ciders and uh, they were like, you got some, you know. But it, it was it was like a sweet one. It was like a, a alcoholic appetizer, but it made me feel more at home all the same so thanks guys for that when I was feeling a little bit far from home you made me feel better about it so uh, yeah we were just talking about um, our love of ciders and how weird our pizzas are which they are there's lots of vegetables and English pizzas I didn't really realize until I came over to America just how peculiar some of the toppings were but um, yeah he's a lovely guy and they actually sent me some lizard man terrain uh, quite a few months ago when I was still in Plymouth and uh, once I've assembled my lizard man stuff, I'll put that into action and, and kind of use it in my um, gaming club and wh when I play there. So, yeah, such lovely guys. And uh, they also got me the zombie side, uh, the zombie women um, that I'm going to be using in a project. If you remember me doing a, a Titanforge review of some undead orcs, uh, orcs and goblins, I'm going to be hopefully doing a doubles tournament where... Um, I do vampire counts and orcs and goblins and I've got the uh, zombie ladies as uh, if I do uh, one of the spells that the vampire counts have where they raise from the dead um, and hopefully use those models so I was really really impressed with this so moving on with our day I've had a war machine game that I won yes I have an interview with Miranda where we just kind of hang out and chat a little bit um, I have an interview with Adam I have an interview with Bill so uh, also what's happening today is the crystal brush. So that's kind of the award ceremonies where my friends Lester Bursley, awesome paint job, uh, Mario, Voices of Mars, and Michelle Oasis Rising have all entered. So I'm very much, I'm, I'm kind of, I've seen some of Les and uh, Mario's stuff and you know, I'm pretty confident that, um, that they're all gonna get something. And, but Michelle was very, and has been over the weekend, very like, no, oh, I don't know. She's very nervous. She's put so much time into this and she's got like 32 videos of her Road to Adepticon where she's painting up the miniatures that she's going to submit into the crystal brush. So she's very, um, she's very like anxious about it all and, and, and so are me and Miranda. So yesterday, on the Saturday, me and Miranda walked past the cabinet where we see Michelle's um, eagle that she submitted and the foot's a little bit snapped. And obviously it's not her doing, it's just like maybe when it's put in there and obviously joints get weakened slightly and we both look at each other like oh no so we try and break the news to Michelle and we're like 
your eagle foot is a little bit bent. And she's like, I know. And we're like, whoa, thank God. At least we didn't have to like break this crushing news. Well, it's not crushing news, obviously, but we felt like she put so much hard work into it. She was already quite worried. So, um, you know, we were just like, oh, okay, good. Um, I don't think it, it obviously didn't make any difference as to like what happened with, with the ceremony, but we were nervous nonetheless for her on top of her like worries. But she'd done a brilliant job and I was really, really impressed with, um, I think it was the Sea Guard, where they were just so crisp and white and gold and blue. They were really stunning to look at and especially the banner. Um, but the Angry Bird, I think it was called, was awesome. So um, yeah, after I do an interview, I then go uh, and watch the, the back end of the uh, Crystal Brush Award Ceremony. So I've got some of the footage here of um, our guys getting some trophies. <laughs> The silver brush refers to the Colossus of Sosnesu by James Byron. Also on Michelle's channel, I think she's done like, Oh my god, I want a crystal brush this! And then for the rest of the day, we kind of not make fun of her about it, but we, um, we like quote it often and she's like all blushing and stuff. She, she's like honestly a bit of a delight to hang out with. Um, so yeah, we, we, I was really, really happy for, for Michelle and of course Mario and Les who who won awards also, but I think because she'd worked so hard on it and it was all really documented, it was so nice to see that kind of finish, like I've got something to show for it. And she got two, she got two crystal brushes and this is like her, her first proper time. So it was excellent, excellent to watch. So well done to all of you guys that won awards for the crystal brush. And here is the um, final ceremony of the three winners. So the winner of the second runner up, Crystal Rush Finals 2014. We have a $1,000 super size check. Is. First runner up. Congratulations to everyone that won. It is a very prestigious award to win. Um, one that I've definitely heard of uh, since I first started looking at Cool Mini or not quite a, quite a lot. You know, it was one of those things um, that you that you see and it's one of those like unreachable uh, things for me. I'm, I'm nowhere near a standard yet, but but honestly, I was so, so proud of, of everyone who won, especially the ones that I knew and had, uh, you know, watched their journey. So, um, yeah, after then, after the award ceremony, everything's starting to kind of die down and get packed away and everything. So I've, I use this opportunity to get some Adepticon goodies. So I get some um, Adepticon dice. Uh, I've, I've got the zombie, uh, zombie ladies. Um, I've got some... What else do I get? I've got some Chicago like hoodies and a t-shirt. Um, I've got a Malifaux rule book, mini rule book, because I think uh, I've got two now, but it always helps, especially when I mislay them, which happens quite often. Uh, and yeah, 
So I got got quite a few bits. I think I got something else as well from the Adepticon table. Oh, the Adepticon Malifaux Fate deck, which is awesome, and it's got some. It's really awesome. The the artwork on it is beautiful. So yeah, uh, kudos to everyone that you know put some stuff in, especially for Adepticon to have that kind of exclusive goodies. But it it was uh, amazing. So. Yep, after the crystal brush and everything like that, the awards, I grab Miranda and we walk around and I say to her, right, after our game yesterday, you got me something, I'm going to get you a Malifaux crew. Look through and pick one, any one you want. So um, Miranda gets her first starter crew. I'm not going to tell you what it is, I'll let her tell you what it is. But yeah, um, I bought Miranda a Malifaux starter crew. Yay! So I'm like roping people into Malifaux as much as possible because I love it. I think it's really cool. It just is. The miniatures are cool, the fluff is cool, and the system is cool. It's like the, the popular kid in Wargaming. That's how I look at it. So yeah, it was, uh, it was really productive and for the rest of the day we kind of just take a wind down. I walk around um, and chat, you know, chat to people here and there and, and Sunday I actually feel really well rested and kind of rejuvenated. So uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of more on my game when I play the War Machine. But um, yeah, for the rest of the evening, we all pretty much uh, like say our goodbyes to some of the people that are leaving that day. So Bill and Sue head off home. Miranda and her buddies head off home. So I've got no roomie for this evening. So, and I was actually really sad about it because we had a great time. Um, she had her stuff to do as well and I had some of my stuff. But when we did hang out, it was really, it was really nice. It was, um, I don't think I've shared a room with a girl in ever so it was cool it was really fun and she made it a great weekend so thank you Miranda for being so awesome and um yeah thank you to to everyone that was uh hanging out with me so pretty much for the rest of the day the, the gang has sort of dissipated engineer Jeff who's a sweetheart and uh really really not shockingly but was just like really funny and I wasn't um anticipating it uh, Van was just the loveliest bloke ever. Uh, Steve, who helped me out um, when I needed him to hold a camera here and there. Um, and yeah, it was it was awesome. Mario, obviously Eric and Jay, who were helping me with the filming yesterday and had their stuff. And you know, everyone who got something out of this week, out of that weekend, be it awards, um, a tournament win, anything at all. You know, it was a great, great time. So we have our meal, we've got uh, the remaining consortium members left over, so we all talk about how productive our weekend was and, you know, what we want to get done. Um, and that that's pretty much it. It's a fairly uneventful evening. There's no shenanigans. We didn't have a massive meal. I go to bed kind of early, actually, because I'm preparing myself um, to kind of pack up and fly home uh, the next day. So that is pretty much it for video number four of Sunday's Adepticon day. So yeah, there we go. Um, I got more gaming done than I anticipated. Two games over this weekend, which uh, although the, the footage might be sporadic here and there, you have to imagine how how long games are to fit into a massively jam-packed weekend. So I was quite impressed with myself that I fitted in some games. Um, and yeah, just generally got up to, got up to mischief, but there's, so much random footage. I feel that I had to be part of telling the story of it all, but I hope you're enjoying it so far. There's one more video left in the playlist, which I will talk about tomorrow, which will be my Monday hanging out with uh, Ken, uh, Badger Ken, Badger Airbrush Ken. Um, a little bit of a tour around the factory that he's got um, in Chicago, and yeah, the journey home and how peculiar O'Hare Airport is. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's that's today's episode. Uh, sorry if yesterday's uploaded really late. Obviously being 40 minutes and the amount of interviews and stuff, it took forever to do. But yeah, this one should be out a little bit sooner. I've also got, hopefully it uploads before then, a mini wargaming live show tonight. Um, I'll put the links to that down below. But I do it every Thursday between uh, 10 and 11, uh, 10 p.m. English time. So yeah, if you're interested in watching that, I'll pretty much be answering any questions live, any that you want to type in. Um, on the Mini Wargaming uh, site, it's free. There's no charges anymore. Um, so it's free to tune in. When I post the link, keeping an eye on Facebook and Twitter, I'll be 
up and uh, running like shortly after. So yeah, feel free to join in and ask lots of questions. Last week's live show was very uh, successful where I answered a lot of Adepticon ones. So if you have any more after watching some of the videos that you wanted to ask me tonight, feel free. I'll be just sitting there for an hour talking mostly Game of Thrones. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why it just ends up that way. And uh, yeah, Adepticon and my kind of views. Now it's been a week, like my reflective thoughts on it all because I was still really tired and jet lagged last week. So yeah, ask away and I will see you tonight if you care to join me. Bye.